Hey everybody, uh, it's Pastor Phil, uh, my beautiful wife, uh, Pastor Christina, uh, and this is Q&A with Pastor Phil and Pastor Kay. We wanted to set up a time where you all could um, send us questions. Yes. We could answer uh, some of your questions. You know, we've been married for 25 years, uh, coming up September of this year. We've been in ministry probably 29 Nine years. years. Yeah. Um, and so the Lord has really been gracious to us. Um, and uh, we're still in love and we still like each other's I presence. Love you. <laughs> and uh, so we're just going gonna to rock out with you all. We're just going to talk and um, answer some of the questions uh, that uh, have been proposed to us. We uh, serve as the pastors here at Greater Shallow Church. Uh, we're um, one church in uh, multiple locations here in Easton, in Stroudsburg, uh, Haiti. On Haiti, thank you very much. And then we have an online campus yes. that is growing, um, and it's, it's blowing our mind that people actually are on the internet, in their homes, um, connecting with us. And uh, we're looking to uh, expand the work that God has given us, um, yes. potentially down to Florida um, and in our local area. So um, you know, here we are. We're just us. Yes. Um, we're gonna hang out with you guys. Um, so I guess we should probably get to the first question. Yeah. 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 Okay. Here it is. Okay, let's start with our first question. The okay. first question is, how do you come up with your sermon series? Man, um, that's, that's crazy because it, a lot of it is driven by, first off, um, my time with the Lord um, and how I'm just preparing and asking God for a message for the house. And then being able to really discern what's happening with our congregation. Yeah. Um, you know, we just came through a real difficult time um, with one of our members who committed suicide. Um, and it was devastating, but yeah, we were right smack in the middle of our rescue series. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I finished up this Sunday um, with Help Wanted and, and how it's important for us that when we are lost and alone, feeling depressed, feeling isolated, to really be able to look around and see that there is help available to us. Yes, um, yes. And, and then, of course, um, in September, super excited about Hidden Figures. Oh, um, I love it. I'm so like excited. Like yeah, yeah. Um, Hidden, Hidden Figures is a, a, a vision that the Lord gave me that many times people are living um, and they don't know that God's presence is with them. So, you know, whether it's angelically, because the Bible really talks about angels, whether it's God kind of being in the middle of the storm mm -hmm. with us, um, or whether, you know, a story like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who ended up in the fiery furnace and literally God stepped into the fire with but us. But he's so, always there with us. Always there. Yeah. God's presence is yeah. always with us. Yeah. yeah. The second question is, uh, when will the children's ministry be reopening? And that's a great question. We took a break over the summer, but our children's ministry will be reopening on September 2nd, yeah. this Sunday. Yeah, so awesome. bring your children. We have some exciting things for them mm -hmm. to engage them and we know how I know how hard personally it is as a mother um, when we had uh, younger uh, mm -hmm. younger children mm -hmm. to actually enjoy and receive the mm -hmm. word of the Lord right. while trying to uh, manage your ch mm -hmm. child and mm -hmm. make sure that they're fed right. and right. get them their snacks mm -hmm. and make sure they're not too loud and disruptive right. in mm -hmm. service so it's really important that you have a good solid mm -hmm. children's ministry in place so yeah. that the mothers can also still continue to grow spiritually yeah, because you know how it is. You be in oh church waving your God. hands and baby just pulling on your mommy, mommy. You're like, baby, I'm trying to get with Jesus. So, uh, you know, I think it's important that, um, you know, our children's ministry, we have like certified teachers yes. um, who yes. are there. There's curriculum that's going to be in place. There's a check in, check out process. And we are so excited about our children's ministry and how it's going to be able to serve uh, the, the members of our community. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The third question is. How did you know you were called to pastor? I didn't. I had no idea. Neither I did I. It. I ran as no. hard as I could from God, no. but every place I ran to, there it was, was somebody who was telling me about Jesus and the goodness of the Lord. Yeah. And finally, I submitted. Um, I was coming out of a horrible marriage, um, and it wasn't her fault. It was my fault. I was just a knucklehead when I was young, um, and I wasn't I wasn't ready to be married. So I was still running, still in the streets, still acting crazy, and God literally let that thing break down yeah, for me. Um, and it humbled me to the place where I was like, all right, God, your way must be the right way. Yeah. What about you? How did you know you yeah. were called? Well, um, I said yes to God first, and yeah. then I said yes to you. Mm -hmm. And when you say you mean yes when I proposed? To you? Yes, when you proposed. Okay. But right. when you say yes to God, um, you just you have to 
just trust him wherever he leads you and wherever he guides you he provides for you the wisdom that you need to be what he has called you to be so i'm just i'm i'm humbled um just i was just ordained in may yeah. and i'm humbled to have the the title of a pastor but I, at when in all actuality i'm just still christina yeah that's right yeah. And, and the cool thing is is that we've been doing this together so when i met my wife, she was already ministering the girls right here in this church, actually across the street at the yeah. chapel, doing their hair and praying for them. And many of them have gone on to become great women of God, actually to work um, in ministry here at the church. So we've been able to watch our kids go because yeah. we weren't senior pastors first. We were youth, youth pastors. pastors. Yeah, yeah. 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 We, we were like just hanging out with the kids, mm -hmm. going, you know, trips. Nice and safe. Yeah, nice and safe. Well, <laughs> they wasn't safe. They done wrecked my car, <laughs> drank my food, lived Drink in my house. Food? Yeah, well, whatever. You get the point. They would cost me money. <laughs> but we saw the investment that we made in their life and um, it, it it was rich for us so we didn't realize that God had a, a larger plan but when he calls you you say yes and he takes care of the rest so yeah you know what I love is that God always calls you to do what you're already doing mm. so we were already leading we mm. were already um, serving, uh, serving yeah. the people of God so he only called us to do what we were already doing yeah. on a greater level that's cool yeah, yeah. Any more questions? You ready for the next question? I'm ready for okay, the questions. next See question ya. is what's your biggest challenge as a person? As a person. So um, just being a husband um, and a father um, and having the responsibility of being a pastor and now being a student as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's four things, but, but the most important thing to me is my relationship with God, my relationship with you. Mm -hmm. So being able to make sure that it's God, family, and then all other things, mm -hmm. like so many preachers, pastors, leaders in the church get that twisted. Yeah. And so they put the church before they put their family, mm -hmm. and that's disorder, yeah. and it causes confusion and hurt and pain in the lives of people. So loving you is really critically important to me. So I know I'm not perfect, but I'm pretty close. But oh, no perfect wow. people allowed. Right. You may not be perfect, but you're perfect for I'm me. perfect for you. That's yes. good. That's good. Yes. So uh, I think it's that whole piece of just really trying to find balance mm -hmm. um, and, and wanting to do for God what God has called me to, but, wanting, but, but God called me to you first. Right. Yeah. So I can't pray for the church if I'm not praying for you. I can't be for the church if I'm not being for you yeah. and for our one biological daughter and then the ones that we have adopted over the years, um, you know, being present and being there for them. So I guess that would be it. Well, balance. I would have to agree that balance has been, in this season of our lives, balance has been the most critical area um, of struggle. And, you know, because balance doesn't always look the, look, look the same, you know, a scale, when you, when you see a, uh, envision a scale, it's always trying to find right. that even place. So just trying to find the right balance so that I can um, be the woman that God has called me to be first and mm -hmm. then be the wife life that God has called me to be and then the mother and then everything else to everyone else right. um, and sometimes it gets out of order just based on the need um, is greater in certain areas uh, but nevertheless I believe that God redeems time yeah, he and he gives you back the time that you give away that you may take away from your children and he, he gives you ch time to pour back into them and to nurture them and to love them and give them everything that they need but nevertheless balance is still a struggle because we want it to look uh, we want it to look perfect but it's never really it's never perfect. perfect it yeah. really isn't mm -hmm. yeah so the last question was uh, marriage um, and just oh, yeah. kind of one thing about marriage that you think is important all right tell them how long will we be married 25 years, when, 25, when, 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 when. September 25th, He remembered, John. He remembered years. the day. This is 25 yes. years on the 25th. That's yes. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but more than that, um, so one thing, and I say this all the time, that we still do yeah. is our date night. Yes, um, every single Friday night yeah. we have a date night, and we've had that. We instilled that in our marriage. Uh, the first year when our daughter was one years old, mm -hmm. and she's 23, 24, 24. years Ooh. old now. So every single <laughs> Friday we take time to just just spend together. Yeah. Um, whether we're having a picnic in our bedroom mm -hmm. on the floor eating Chinese food mm -hmm. or whether we're out on an expensive date, which I like those very much. I like the Chinese <laughs> food. 
but we take that time and we invest in our marriage yeah. and then we invest in uh, communication with one another and those dates don't always look the same yeah. sometimes it's a conversation mm -hmm. about those hard issues yeah. and things that may have happened throughout the week that we didn't have a chance to communicate about but taking that time mm -hmm. uh, to just really uh, focus Listen. on yeah each other and yeah. not any anything else no distractions That's right. just the two That's of right. us and the importance of listening like you know when i listen to my wife honestly listen to her i can hear what's in her heart and so people say they fall out of love um you know for whatever reason stuff happens circumstances happen but it's because we don't learn to listen because yeah. listening is not judging what somebody's saying mm -hmm. it's being willing to take the journey with them That's right. and many a times the journey that you take really helps you to see inside the individual mm -hmm. um and then you can appreciate what's going on in their heart because people are not generally mean mm -hmm. sometimes they don't know how to communicate what's going on. Mm -hmm. And so anger comes out or bitterness comes out. And anger is a secondary emotion. Mm -hmm. So if you see somebody who's angry all the time, anger comes from hurt. Right. And a lot of times people are hurt because other people won't take time to listen to them. Um, and so, you know, for us, we've just learned to listen to one another. And, yeah. you know, she's really good at um, helping me to listen sometimes when I'm not listening. Because as men, we want to fix it. Like, get to the end of the story. I'm going to tell you what you should do. You'll be good. You know, if you just <laughs> listen to me because I'm your husband. Well, my husband told me this alarming <laughs> statistic years ago is that women speak 10,000 more words a day a than day. men. Hey, so mercy. when I'm at like my at my limit, like my top of 5,000, I'm like, okay, just chill. I'm not done. <laughs> I still got like 5,000 more to go. So just keep listening and I'll right. get to where I need to get to. Right. But uh, in all actuality, we just really enjoy one another and we still love each other really uh, uh, more and more every single day and it is possible to be married 25 years and still to yet. still experience a new love mm -hmm. every single day mm -hmm. and if God can give us a new love every single day then we can give each other that That's so right. Right. we're intentional about that hashtag be intentional, intentional. Yeah. Right. I think that's it yeah that was fun. Yeah, that was cool. Hope you come back and see us again soon. Um, we're going to be real consistent with um, just taking time out. and We'll give you an opportunity. There'll be some information where if you want to send us some questions yes, or whatever, yes. connect with us. Uh, we love, love, love God. We love God's people. Um, and so always remember this. No, no perfect, perfect people, people allowed. allowed. All right. God bless. Peace.